Hey, I want to welcome you back to another episode of the AWM NFL Podcast. My name is Ricardo Stewart. I have the pleasure of being your host, and I'm joined with my friends, Sam Acho, Jeff Locke, and Zach Miller. Well, fellas, we get an opportunity. We're really talking about multi-generational wealth, but there's this phrase that when I stepped into the industry and in terms of the family office space and ultra wealthy people, the phrase shirt sleeve to shirt sleeve would come up. And I would say, what the heck does a shirt sleeve to another shirt sleeve have to do with millions of dollars? And it absolutely just seems like crazy. And I remember the one of the first, you know, of course you Google everything, you Google it, I watch a video and there's this very proper guy on there. And he says, you know, you've all probably heard of this. I'm like, oh, I've never heard of this phrase. And so Jeff, just first tell us what the heck shirt sleeve to shirt sleeve even means. Yeah, so really the saying goes back to essentially having short sleeves on when you are just working for yourself and having to earn a bunch of money to pay your bills. And then eventually you make enough money where you put a longer sleeve shirt on, right? You're now a business person making decisions because you have money to make decisions, but then you spend all your money, right? And then you go back to the next generation has to wear short sleeves again to go out and like roll their sleeves up and start earning a bunch of money. All right. So that's where it comes from. Shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves. Uh, but really it just means like, Hey, we didn't do what we were supposed to do when we got all of this money to make it last for generations is what it really means. And I also don't like it. I want to use something else. Yeah, I feel like, like, can you imagine us sitting down with our clients and be like, okay, so what we're going to start now is we're going to talk about not going from shirt sleeve to shirt sleeve. You know exactly what I mean. <laughs> they would look at us and go, hey, um, next, please, right? So, <laughs> so really, if I'm hearing you right, Jeff, really what it's saying is the first generation starts with very humble means and they kill it. They, they assume and make all of this wealth, the next generation kind of maintains it. Like they get, they get lawyer degrees, they get doctorate degrees, like they do a good job, but they maintain it. And then the third generation, so in essence, the grandkids, they just blow it. They don't have the same living values, the same work legs that took to build it. And we're going, this happens in all cultures and we see that there is, there's a lack. And so we talk a lot about multi-generational wealth. And when we sit with guys, Sam, we, we ask them first and foremost, do you want to achieve multi-generational wealth? And their, their answer is usually, yes, absolutely. Bet, let's get it. What do you think they mean when they say they want multi-generational wealth? Well, I think they mean what I probably thought I would say when I mean what I, when I said it, just this idea of, man, I want to be able to buy whatever I want to buy, live wherever I want to live, go on whatever trip I want to go on. By take care of my mom, take care of my dad. If I got sister, brother, family, be able to take care of everyone and be good. That's what I think that a lot of athletes mean when they say, yeah, I want multi-generational wealth. What I think they forget, we forget, is the actual term multi-generational, meaning generations, children and children's children, right? Grandkids. I, th I think about my dad right now. He has, what, four, six grandkids. And it's like, okay, multi-generational wealth means for him and his, you know, getting older, all the things, okay, my children are taken care of, but now even if my own children blow it all off, I, the leader of the generation, will take care of their kids. That's the type of multi-generational wealth that we mean when you say we want it to last. Not just, okay, I get the car or the house or this or that. No, we want it to last. The one thing I've heard, we, you know, we, we uh, read a couple of different books, this idea of it's not about what you see, it's about what you don't see, right? Oh man, the, the money I have in the bank, not the, not the house or the watch or the thing I could show off. What, I, what you don't see, what gets passed on. That oftentimes mm -hmm. can be this idea of multi-generational wealth. Professor, I'm gonna come to you. By definition, what is multi-generational wealth? Yeah, we, we described it in a couple of ways already, but it literally is just, you have enough money to support your current family and your kids, and then they're gonna have assets or you're gonna have assets to pass on to your kids to then support their kids and possibly their kids. So it's generation after generation after generation from the money you accumulated into assets that are actually earning things by being invested. So I feel like we're always aiming at a moving target when it comes to wealth. And I say we just be as a culture and we go, okay, this person's wealthy, this person has wealth, this person has wealth, yo, he got money. Like whatever it is, Zach, what would be a clear number of like, yes, a family in America with this amount of net worth is considered wealthy? 
Well, are we talking NFL players or are we talking the average the average person? Because you know what, let's just keep it honest with our NFL players then. I'll, and that's exactly where I was going. So NFL players, you're going to want to basically have a net worth of thirty million dollars by the time you're done playing if you want to have that generational wealth. Now you can still have plenty of plenty of personal wealth and have less than that, especially if you if you understand like you know all the things that come after football that that money is only going to be made in like a 10 year period at most, but really to hit that 30 million mark will allow you to kind of spend the money you did as an NFL player or close to it for the rest of your life. And then be able to bless your kids and bless your grandkids with that money that can set them up for the future. So having that is, I mean, when you're going out there playing for a contract, you have that in the back of your mind that if I sign this kind of deal, I will have 30 million in investments by the time I'm done playing, that's a great target to have because you can say, if I go do this on the field, I will be rewarded with generational wealth. You know, of course, it's not that easy, but um, you at least set yourself up for it. I still go back, and I've said this before on the podcast. I mean, probably, it's probably 20 years ago now, maybe more. Chris Rock is doing some, some stand-up, and he goes, there's a difference between being rich and then being wealthy, right? And the Chris Rock would be rich and wealthy. And he's like, Shaquille O'Neal at the time was playing for the Lakers. He's rich. But the dude who signs his check is wealthy. Like, and he was just trying to show like one has money and one has wealth. All the studies show right now, Jeff, that the number that Zach just threw out there, that 30 million of net worth puts you in the ultra wealthy category. And let's just say that the NFL players in which we serve, which many of them do, they get to where Zach was talking about and they have that 30 million is that enough money or enough wealth to set the proper trajectory of multi-generational wealth? My answer, like most answers, is it depends, right? And really it depends on what you're spending now, what you're going to spend the rest of your life, and what your priorities are that you want to fund, what goals you want to accomplish. So I ran some super generic numbers just so we have a reference point here. And guys, this is not financial advice, so please do not take this as advice. But say you have $30 million in assets, right? And you spend 500,000 bucks a year for the next 70 years. Say you're 30, right? You could potentially pass down $50 million to your next generation spending 500K a year, right? But say you crank it up a little bit. You want to spend 700K a year for the rest of your life. Now you're passing down maybe 10 million-ish. Right. So you've dropped 40 million by just spending 200K extra a year. Right. And then if you spend 800K a year, you might not be passing down anything to the next generation. Right. So we're talking just a couple hundred K difference a year in spend when you're at that $30 million mark can be the difference between passing down nothing and passing down 50 million to your next generation and their generations. So 30 million isn't just like, hey, I got 30 million, I'm good, I can spend whatever I want. You still have to have a plan built out that you can follow and keep things in check. Hey man, that was that was some that was some knowledge, my friend. I appreciate that, Professor. Yeah, I got you. You know I love the numbers. Hey, that was that was very clear. And I can dang, got you. I appreciate that. So, Zach, with that, what are some of the roadblocks that get in the way of gaining uh you know, attaining, sustaining multi-generational wealth? Well, first and foremost, the biggest roadblock is you have to you have to get the contract you deserve with your play on the field. Like no one can play for you. You have to you have to put the tape out there that you're one of the best at your position to get that kind of contract that gets you that money in your account. That's first and foremost. Second is just understanding the spending part. Like like Jeff just said, those numbers they matter. And like, for me, when I was done playing, I had no idea what I was spending. I never tracked spending. I had no visibility. I give myself an F in like knowledge of how much I was spending per year, but to have that kind of knowledge and, and makes you feel really good because then maybe even some guys that are spending not very much, you could actually spend more and still pass a ton onto your kids. There is, there's a ton of value to be gained from knowing like, Hey, what, what can I spend annually when I'm done playing and still pass on 20, 50, 100 million to my kids, that is extremely valuable. And I mean, it just helps you sleep well at night. And then of course, there's all the other things that are, we always worry about. It's someone suing you, getting hurt too early in your career. Um, you know, you know, you saw with the, 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 the hockey players that got ran over by a car, like this absolutely brutal stuff happens all the time. You got to protect against all those risks 
to so that your your family is set up in the worst case scenario. Sam, you always drop some knowledge and some wisdom for us. And so anything would you add to this in terms of just roadblocks that could get in the way that you've seen? It's easy to make money or to build wealth. It's hard to sustain it. There are two different skill sets. One is a very risky, I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go after it. It's my contract here. I got to do whatever it takes. I'm going to take all these chances, opportunities. I may win big. I may fail big, make a lot of money, but it's a entirely different skill set to be able to keep it and to sustain it. So that's one thing that I think people forget oftentimes is, okay, well, I was able to make it. I'm going to use those same skills, those same attributes, and I'm going to use those to keep it and sustain it for generations. You may not have that skill set just yet. Now it's something that you can learn and you can build and you can grow, or you can hire some people to help you with that skill set. But just understand that those are two different skill sets. And the last thing I'll say is this. You talked about, Zach, that idea of 30 million of net worth. It's okay, man, I signed a contract for 30 million. Great, I'm good. Well, no, 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 that's not exactly what it means. Because when you get that contract, think about taxes, say, think about the things that you own or that you owe. So it's really, it's really, I love how Zach said it, almost this idea of what, what's invested? What do I have that's invested that it's actually not, I'm not giving it away for taxes, et cetera. What is that money that I can actually make? And then how do I make that money last? We've said it before, and we're going to say it all the time. When it comes to building multi-generational wealth, we said there's four rules there. One, you got to have money, right? We're saying 30 million, <laughs> got to have the money. Two, you got to have knowledge, but knowledge enough is not it. Knowledge alone is not it. You got to also have skill set and you got to have discipline. Sam, since you said two earlier and you kind of gave them the hook and horns, that third one right there, that third one is one we're going to talk about. And that's the skills, the skills of human capital. How are you going to earn it on the field and off the field? The skill of understanding the tax game that, that, that Sam began to mention, understanding cash flow, being able to understand um, paying your future self with an S in essence, giving every dollar you have a job. And lastly, being an athlete CEO. So for the next two episodes, we're going to talk more about what are those five skill sets that an athlete needs to, to have and sustain multi-generational wealth. Any questions you guys have, any thoughts you guys have, we'd love to hear from you. You can reach us at 602-989-5022. Again, 602-989-5022.